Hello and welcome to part three of our special episodes looking at outdoors, which was the first videos we made for the channel 100,000 subscribers ago. So thank you so much again for everyone who has subscribed and watching from the channel. In this episode, we're going to look at how to add a key for our door. Now, there's loads of ways of doing this, and as I note in the video, uh, what we're going to do is do a very simple, basic uh, version of this, where the key is in the same level as the door. But this isn't always the case, so do bear that in mind. But thank you very much. Let's take a look at it. So whilst making a door, we made it have a lock and unlock door function. But at the moment, we're not using this. Now we're going to create a very simplized, a simplified uh, unlocking system. Now it doesn't have to be like this. If you've got an inventory system already set up, uh, maybe you've been following our inventory series, you can use the query inventory to work out whether or not this doors has, if you have the item this door needs to open itself up. But we're going to keep this as short as possible. I'm not going to go through and create another inventory component for this. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a very simple pickup. And the way this is going to work is on our variable list of our door, we're going to have in here set to key. And the key is going to be known as an actor object reference. So you choose actor, you go to object reference here. And again, we're at the editable and we'll put it on door settings. Pile. Now, with this actor reference, we are making sure it's inseparable so we can change it per door. But when you have it selected, you'll notice on here on the right hand side, the events all ticked on over here that you can enable. And we want the on destroyed pin. So click on on destroyed at the event for that. And on destroyed actor for the actor we are associated to it, the key, we want to call unlock door. Okay. Now, how to do the actual key itself. The key, we're just gonna make a simple actor for. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a blueprint class, actor BP key. And we'll just add a very simple shape to this. And I'll just turn it off. And there's our key card. And I'm actually going to make it spin as well for a bit of fanciness. So there's actually a rotating movement component you can use, which will add spinning to your assets really easily. Over here on the right-hand side, we can change the rotation rate between, well, whatever we want. I'm going to make this a bit slower, down to 90 degrees in the rotation there. And if you want to see what it's like, just hit the simulation button at the top, and you'll see what it does. Okay, that's what we're going to do here. Now to do the overlap for this, when you go to the cube I've made the, for the mesh, go down to its physics and collision section, and the collision presets, we're gonna change from block or dynamic to overlap all. We then go to the event graph. And on here, we've got the actor begin overlap event. If you don't see it, just right click and search for actor uh, begin overlap. So first thing we'll do is check whether the other actor is equal to the player character. And if that's the case, and that's true in a branch, we want to destroy this actor. Now keep in mind when we call the destroy actor, that's gonna trigger the door to unlock. So let's take a look at that in action. I'm going to put the key in over here somewhere. Right there. And back on the door, you see I have a key option now in a details panel. If I choose a little eyedropper tool, I can choose the key from the map. Now keep in mind, this will only work if the actor you want to bind this to is in the same level and same world as this actor. If they're in different worlds, then you have to deal with making a whole inventory system which will store the state of what items you've picked up. As I said, but at the top of this video, feel free to check out the inventory series where we do actually include some of that work in there. Now we've got the door, it's got a key. We're going to tell the door to be locked, so it is locked. We're going to turn on to be true. And that's it. So let me hit play. 
got my door, hit E, nothing happens. I forgot my spinning key card over here. And it's gone. I can now go over to this door, hit E, open it, walk through, and exit. Perfect. So the final thing I want to show you is making this door more useful to a designer is by giving it events that it can be dispatched to other actors in our scene, including the level blueprint. So on my door, I'm going to go down to event dispatches and set up a load of different events that could happen in here. So for one, we got on door open. Or on, uh, we'll do on open. There you go. We'll do another one for on close. And we'll do another one for on unlock. So when we call unlock door, when we, before we do the branch, because this is going to be true no matter what we do here, we're just going to move this across and go down to on unlock and call it. I'm then going to go to my timeline in the event graph and we're going to go up here. And we're going to use this switch here to determine which one we're going to do. So on open will be called on the top one here when this is true. And on close will be called down here, which is false. Now putting in these little hooks are really useful because we can now use this door to trigger other events and other things in our map quite easily. So for example, if I have this door selected, I could go to my level blueprint, right click on this, and add an event for BP door. And if you search here, I've got default, add on close, open and unlock. So do open, and I can make it do whatever I like. This is a really, really good thing to put in as it gives a lot more flexibility to designers to create more interesting chain reactions of things going on in the game. Now, to become a better game developer and game programmer, these are all useful tips over the past few videos that you should take on board. Think about ways you can make your object you're making more extensible, meaning we can change them, add them, and use more things on them in other situations. So we can give a load of settings to designers to tweak and adjust. Think about how you can use event dispatches to help communicate with, between different blueprints. And think about what kind of uses the designers may have for it. Too often, developers will just make the game and make the code just for them and not think about possible end users for this. By doing this, you become a better programmer and a better game developer as a whole. So there you have it. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching and subscribing to the channel over the past few years. Um, it's been a joy working with all of you and helping everyone I can. This is just the beginning, as I always keep saying, we've got lots of plans and we can't wait to do more with you all in the future. Thanks for watching, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next time.